In reading this question, I can't emphasize enough that this is a complete different than the previous process we've done. This is about absolute maximums and minimums on a closed interval. This is a complete different process than finding increasing, decreasing, and relative extrema. So the first step that we're going to do in solving this problem is we are going to find those critical values. To find the critical values, we need the derivative of the function. The derivative of this function would be 2x minus 8. We set it equal to 0 as this is never undefined. It is a polynomial function. Adding 8 to both sides, I end up with 2x equals 8. Dividing both sides by 2, I end up with x equals 4. This is in the domain of my original function, so this is my critical value. I do nothing else with the derivative of this function. I don't create a number line. I don't do anything else remotely related to what I've been doing the rest of the time. Now, for the second one, what I want to do is I want to look at the function in the x values. I want to look at the original function, x squared minus 8x plus 10. What I'm doing is I'm finding the highest and lowest point on the intervals. If we think about this, you don't need a number line. I'm just doing this as a visual. We're thinking about the numbers 0 to 7, and the only critical value in here is at x equals 4. So these are my three test points, not test points. These are the three points that I need to plug in to the original function. Let's see what we get. When I plug in 0 using a calculator, I end up with a 10. When I plug in a 4, Using a calculator, I end up with the number negative 6. And when I plug in 7 into the function using a calculator, I end up with a y value of 3. Whichever one of these is the highest value, which seems like this one right here, 10, implies that the point 0, 10 must be your absolute maximum. Whichever one's the lowest y value looks like here when x equals 4. This is the point 4, negative 6. Because this is the lowest of the three y values, this is your absolute minimum. Notice we are writing our maximums and minimums as ordered pairs. So the maximum was the point 0, 10. The minimum was the point 4, negative 6. A very different technique than the original problems that we've been doing for increasing, decreasing, and relative extrema. Note, we only use the derivative to find the critical values. We are now plugging into the original function and picking the highest value as the maximum. Plug it into the original function, the lowest value is your minimum. Let's give this try again. Look at the next problem. Again, it says the absolute maximum and minimum on a closed interval. Absolute maximums and minimum values on a closed interval. Again, our strategy for this. The first thing we want to do is find the derivative and the critical values. The derivative here is f prime of x would be equal to 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. We set that equal to 0. As this is a polynomial function, it is never undefined. We don't need to consider that case. In solving this quadratic equation equal to 0, I don't care which method you use. Some of you might be comfortable with the quadratic formula. Go ahead and use it. I like factoring if possible. For instance, I see everything has a 6 in common, so I'm going to divide every single term by 6. I end up with the equation x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. I need two numbers that multiply to be negative 2, add to be 1. That would be x plus 2 and x minus 1 equals to 0. Set each one of those factors equal to 0. x plus 2 equals 0 gives me x equals negative 2 x minus 1 equals 0 gives me x equals 1. These two numbers are in the domain of my original function, so these are my critical values. Again, this is the only thing that I use the derivative for. Now what I need to do is consider what interval do they actually care about. They care about the interval from 0 to 2. Notice the only critical value between those two numbers is the critical value 1. The number negative 2 is not in this interval, so we do not want to plug in negative 2. Let me emphasize that again. Negative 2 is not in the interval we care about. It is a critical number, but it is not in the interval we care about. So the only three numbers that we're going to be plugging into this function are 0, 
1, and 2, the endpoints of the interval and any critical numbers within that interval. Notice I am not plugging them into the derivative function, I am plugging them into the original function. And here, I don't just care about the sign, I do care about the actual y value. Using the table function on my feature, or the table feature on my calculator, I'm going to determine the y values. When I plug in 0, I get the number 3, the y value of 3, so that's the point zero, 3. When I plug in 1, I get the number negative 4, so that's the point 1, negative 4. When I plug in 2, I get a 7, so that's the point 2, 7. Looking at those y values, I notice that the highest y value is a 7, and I notice that the lowest y value is a negative 4. The lowest y value is negative 4 implies this is my absolute minimum. The highest value is 7, that implies that that is my absolute maximum. When I write the answers in the final answer blank, I need to make sure that I am writing the ordered pairs. So the absolute maximum is the point 27, and the absolute minimum is the point 1, negative 4.